My dudes, what's going on? It's time for the next part of the worship guide, explaining towers and how to maximize your starting points. And also later in the video, I'll give you some early to late game setups to help you get some high waves and some serious soul gain. Also, we have a brand new second YouTube channel for the clips and VODs so you guys can get some more Griffey Bit content from the Twitch stream. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's start off with the towers to explain the basics of them and what you're looking for to trying to push higher waves. When watching a guide or looking at images about tower defense on how to set them up, you'll see them labeled as AAB or BAB. Now, what does that mean? Every tower has a perk bonus at level 5. During the tower defense, for example, party starter would be AAB, so you'll level up that tower to level 15, and you'll pick two from the top bonus and one from the bottom bonus. First tower we're going to look at is Pulse Mage, the first tower that you'll get, and also the first one you're going to replace. It does single target damage, with the A trait being 25% chance to multi-hit, and the B trait doing a pushback to the enemies by 5 pixels. And with boss monsters, the pushback does not affect them. Although it's a solid tower for early game, it will end up being useless mid game. Setup for this tower is going to be AAB. The next tower is the Fire Lobber, which is our first AoE tower that lobs fireballs just like the name. Another tower that's good for early game, but you're going to instantly zoom past it with the A trait that gives you a 15% chance to shoot two fireballs, and B trait that'll increase the explosion radius by 20%. A good setup for this tower will be AAB. And for you guys that don't know, AOE stands for Area of Effect. This tower is where the progression really starts, the Boulder Roller. The Boulder Roller is going to carry you through tower defense from mid-game to early late game, so upgrading this tower to construction is going to be a must. Although it's weak due to low range and doesn't have a really high hit cap, it gets complemented with its traits, from A trait being the boulders increase the travel by 30%, and the B trait, which allows you to hit an extra two mobs per upgrade. This will easily help you get to about 50 plus waves until late game. A great trait combo for this will be BAB, and running three beside each other will absolutely decimate mobs. Next up is Frozen Malone, the bread and butter of crowd control. Due to its slowing enemies, and even used in late game, with A trait being a 15% increase to the slow, and B trait adding an extra two seconds to the slow. And no, you cannot stack multiple Frozen Malone towers and have the mobs barely ever move. It's a unique debuff. So you're only going to be running one tower in front of your DPS to maximize damage. A good trait combo for this will be AB, because you're never we're going to level this past level 10. Next up is the Storm Caller, the mid game boss smiter. It has no AoE, but it does insane single target damage. And later game, it becomes actually more of a support tower with A trait increasing the tower's damage by 200% to mobs below 60%, kind of like an execute, and B trait increasing all towers' crit chance by 20%. So mid game, you will use the combo trait of AAB, and late game, you'll be using the traits BBB to give all your towers 60% crit chance. Next, we have the no damage Giga Chad, the party starter. From mid to late game, you will use this absolutely everywhere. And not only will you use it, you will use a lot of them. With Trey A increasing towers in range with 25% increased speed and B trait increasing all towers damage by 15%. So usually when you're pushing, you're going to have about five to seven party starters. So for the example, five party starters are going to be AAB and two party starters are going to be BBA to have a nice split between damage and speed. Coming up next is the summoner of the towers, the Kraken Cosplayer, that summons eyeballs that are called underlings, that push back enemies and keeps them from progressing incredibly well. It's meta for late game progression, and literally used in every composition, with A trait being plus one max underling, and B trait increasing the underling's pushback. This tower specifically will help you push super high waves because it will keep all your mobs in a condensed area to concentrate all DPS to nuke down the waves. Not only that, it will also push it into the Frozen Malone Tower to keep everybody slowed. A great trait combo for this would be AAB, or you could go ABB, depending on the map and how much pushback you actually want. But usually, you're only going to level this tower up to level 10. Now, this is where the true endgame towers are, the Poisonic Elder, that drops poison clouds on the ground that does poison ticking damage. What makes this tower super overpowered, unlike the Boulder Roller, is that it has absolutely no AoE cap. So you could have like 100 mobs condensed in one area and the poison clouds would hit every single one of them. And trait A increases the duration of the poison clouds by 5 seconds and trait B increases the poison clouds tick by 30%. So the combo for this one would be ABB for maximum damage. This tower will replace boulder rollers altogether. And finally, the last tower and the brand new tower to world five, the Voidinator. They cast a weak, damaging, small ranged AOE, but it has a special perk. It debuffs all the mobs and takes away their buffs. 
For instance, the blue mobs, after they get hit five times, they become invincible. The Voidinator will take away those buffs permanently. You will 100% need this if you're going to push high TD because those mobs actually cause soft locking. And trait A gives you a 25% chance for a faster cooldown, and trait B will give all your towers 20% increased damage. You usually only want to level this tower to level 10 due to it being incredibly expensive. And for the combo trait, you're going to be running BB because your party starters are going to give you all the speed you possibly need. So now that we know what all the towers do, let's give you a couple examples of tower setups for progressing. Now keep in mind, this is something work towards. You're not going to get this right away, but if you put enough levels into construction and keep on leveling up those towers, you'll have it in no time. For early to mid game, you're going to be doing the boulder roller setup. And what you want is one frozen Malone tower, followed by three boulder rollers, one Kraken, two storm callers within range, and then you want about five party starters. You want to get every tower to level five, starting off with your party starters, then going to your boulder rollers, and then the other towers. And then you want to instantly get your party starters to level 10 and get your boulder rollers to level 10 as well. And then party starters to 15. You usually don't have the points to do this when you're early to mid game, but if you do have the extra points, you definitely want to push that. And if you manage to even have more points than that, or you need to push a boss wave, you could take your storm callers to level 10 just to squeeze out that extra wave. For late game, everything changes up. You want a Voidinator in the front, followed by a Frozen Malone, four Poisonic Elders, three Kraken Cosplayers, one Stormcaller for the crit chance, and five to seven party starters. The main priority are the party starters. These are your bread and butter. These are what makes you do incredible amounts of damage. So every tower, level five as soon as possible, starting off with the party starters, then Poisonic Elders. Then after that, you want to focus your party starters, your Poisonic Elders to level 10, and then your party starters to level 15. And then you want to get your other towers level 10, and then finish it off by getting Poisonic Elder to level 15, and then your Storm Caller to level 15. And by that time, you can level up your other towers to level 15, but you're probably not gonna get there. I'll be explaining more in depth about these setups in another video, but this is just an example just to get you started. Now let's explain the enemies and the special color properties. So gray is the normal baseline mob. A green mob will heal after it's below 50% HP. A red mob will apply a healing buff after it's killed. The blue mob will go invincible after five hits. The orange one, which is also the biggest pain one, will daze nearby towers once destroyed. And purple mobs will teleport every time they are hit. And yes, the Voidinator will actually turn every mob into a gray mob. And that's why it's so overpowered. The best class for tower defense is Hunter for two reasons. The panic button, known as stop right there, that roots all enemies within range for a set amount of time depending on the talent's level, and Kung Fu Kick that will knock back enemies, and it will knock back further depending on what level the talent is. It's very good for splitting up boss mobs if you're trying to take down one boss mob at a time. Hunter is pretty much required to hit high level TD anyways, so make sure to level up those two perks and do your tower defense with Hunter specifically. Now let's talk about how to increase your starting points in tower defense and which will be ideal to farm towards. The achievement Fat Souls will increase your worship points by 15. The Salt Lick buff known as Dioxide Synthesis will increase the points earned while killing monsters in tower defense. The Stamp Banked Points will increase starting points per level. The Vile Crab Juice will give you points per level. In cooking, the Meal Cannoli will give you points earned by killing mobs by a percentage. And the two cards that you want to farm are Dune Souls and Rooted Souls. That will give you starting points for worship, up to a maximum of 50 points, and if you have the card doublers, it will give it up to 100 points. And yeah, I know that was an info dump, but let's be honest, tower defense is no joke. But there you go, my dudes, part two of the worship guide all about the towers. Hope you guys enjoyed, and make sure to subscribe. We're almost at 10,000 subs, so thank you so much, Itty Bitty Army, for your contribution. And make sure to comment if I forgot anything, or tell me what you think. And like the video as well to help out with the algorithm. But anyways, I gotta get back to the guide grind. Stay tuned for the next Eidolon video. Stay safe. Happy grinding and peace out.